What is up guys? We are back with another BIOS video and it's been a little bit since we've done a BIOS video, but we have brand new AMD Ryzen 7000 series processors, which means we have brand new AMD motherboards. Now the motherboard that we're gonna be doing the BIOS overview on today is ASRock's X670E Tai Chi. Now, if you're wondering, how do I get into the BIOS? Like, how do I get into this menu system? All you do is just keep on hitting the delete key on your keyboard when you power your system on. Just keep on hitting it. As soon as you hit the power button on your PC, just keep on hitting the delete key and you'll eventually be dropped into the BIOS. This is not the backspace key. Just keep on pressing the delete key and you'll be dropped into this menu system. Now, one thing I find a little odd is that on Intel-based motherboards from ASRock, they have an easy mode. That's sort of like a, a mode that just allows you to change certain settings very quickly. It has a really nice graphical user interface. Here on the AMD side, they don't have an easy mode. I don't know why they've been doing this for the past few generations that the AMD BIOSes don't have easy mode. I don't know if there's two different teams working on, you know, one team for the Intel BIOSes, another team for the AMD BIOSes, and there's just no easy mode. Not sure, but it would be nice to have an easy mode on the AMD side. Now, when you are drop, drop down into the BIOS here, uh, the first page you'll be on is the main page, and this gives you information on your BIOS, you know, the processor that you're running, memory that you're running, the version of the BIOS, and that's basically it. We can go over to OC Tweaker, and we have a bunch of different settings. Now, the one setting that I know you guys probably want to set up is your memory if you you know if you have memory that has amd expo profiles or xmp profiles you need to be able you need to be able to enable those profiles so what you do is you just go down to dram profile configuration click on that and you just go to DRAM profile setting, and then you'll have the settings. The different profiles that are on your memory will be listed here, and you just select one, and you're good to go. That easy. Now, by default, this CPU overclocking will be set to auto. If you wanna do some basic overclocking, you can go ahead and hit customize, and then you can set your CPU frequency in your uh, CPU voltage. Just like, again, very simple overclocking, but if, if you wanted to, you know, mess around with different overclocking, just very simple stuff, you can go ahead and do that right there. We have our DRAM timing configuration, and this will allow you to tighten or loosen your timing. So if you wanted to do some simple memory overclocking when it came to timings, you can loosen or tighten your timings in here as well get out of that and then we have all of our voltages so all of our voltages are all right here everything is sort of listed here and then we even have external voltage settings that we can go into and it's all right here now if you wanted like really in-depth settings for overclocking we will get to those um, but this is sort of the basic stuff that's just in the OC tweaker tab. You also have the ability to save and load profiles. So if you have like an overclocking profile that you didn't want to run all the time or something like that, you can save and load profiles to the BIOS, uh, which is a pretty nice feature. Now going over into advanced CPU configuration just shows you all your information on your CPU and then the different things that your CPU you can enable or disable them. And we have the FTPM switch. This is enabled by default, so we really don't need to go over it. We made a whole video on enabling TPM on AMD uh, processors. It's enabled by default, so you don't need to change anything. PCI configuration, again, not a whole lot there. Onboard devices configuration. This is everything that's on the board. Um, so again, you can set your different LED settings. You can set your different RGB settings, like if you the RGBs on the board completely off. You hate RGB, you can just turn them off in the BIOS. You'll never have to change them or anything like that. And then just things like the onboard HD audio, onboard LAN, you can turn the Wi-Fi off if you're not gonna use it. You can turn Bluetooth off if you're not gonna use it. And then the PCI uh, Gen 5 ReDriver things um, that you, again, you won't have to change any of this stuff really by default, but it's all in there if you need to. Storage configuration, this will show you all of the SATA drives that you have connected. We don't have any SATA drives connected because we're using NVMe. Um, we can go down to, oops, we can go down to NVMe configuration and we can see that we do have one drive installed there um, and they'll just give you information on your drive. So if you're having trouble, like is my drive being detected? I'm not sure. You can go in here and see if it is being detected by the BIOS. ACP 
ACPI configuration just all right in here. Trusted computing. Um, again, this is all enabled by default. You don't have to change anything, um, you know, for to get Windows 11 installed. It's all enabled, so you don't have to change any of these settings. But if you were using a different type of security device, uh, you can change these settings if you want to. AMD CBS. So this is different options for Ryzen specific processors. Um, I'm not going to go into all of these because this is just a basic BIOS overview. But if you're looking for specific options, uh, which are in the BIOS for the Ryzen specific things, they're all in here. Um, and again, you can change all of this stuff if you need to. Um, again, everything's set to auto. You, If you're running your processor, just no overclocking, not doing anything, um, you know, you can change all these, or you don't need to change all these if it, you're just running everything. But all the options are in here for a bunch of different things. And then you have the AMD PBS stuff, uh, which will show you your AMD firmware version. So again, if you need to upgrade uh, the AMD firmware, it will let you know um, you know what version you are running. So if there is some type of vulnerability, uh, which we've seen in the past, you'll be able to update it or performance uh, that AMD will fix with firmware. You'll be able to see the version that you're running so you can know if you have the latest version or not. And then AMD common platform module. Um, again, you can change your link speeds and everything like that if you need to. Um, again, all this stuff set to auto, so you really won't have to change it unless you're you know, downgrading your link speeds or doing something different, uh, which some people have issues with graphics cards that you need to do that, uh, but you won't need to do that there. And then we have the AMD overclocking. Again, this is where if you are doing some serious overclocking, this is the menu that you're going to go into. And like always, you have to accept this, you know, you're going to damage your, your stuff. So just hit accept. And then you have all of these different settings for overclocking. So manual CPU, CPU overclocking, you can set your CPU frequency, your CPU voltage, CPU core counts. Um, you, there's a bunch of stuff you can do in here. I'm not gonna go over all these settings because this isn't an overclocking you know, specific video, but a lot of stuff you can change. You can change all of your you know, memory timing, infinity fabric things, precision boost overdrive. You can set up all the different things you can do. You can enable or disable LN2 mode. Um, again, everything that you really need to do if you're doing serious overclocking is in this menu. It's not under OC Tweaker for the most part. Uh, it's all in this specific menu. So again, if you need to do overclocking, it's in this menu. It's not really in the OC Tweaker. Um, active page on entry. So this allows you to set the page that you're going to enter when you enter the BIOS. By default, it's set to main, but you can set it to any of these different things um, when you enter the BIOS. And then full HD UEFI BIOS. It's set to auto. Whatever monitor you're running, it's going to detect and you know put the BIOS out there in that resolution. Under tools, we have RGB LED tool. This allows you to change the RGB LED settings um, in the BIOS. So if you don't like ASRock's RGB software, their Polychrome Sync, you can basically set all of the modes here uh, and set the speed and set the brightness um, of everything. You know, you have all the different settings and you can apply them. Uh, you can apply them to all the channels as well. So you can just change everything uh, pretty easily without having to use their software. SSD secure erase tool, of course, this will allow you to securely erase an SSD. And then they have one for NVMe as well. Um, and then there's instant flash, which allows you to easily flash your BIOS. So you put your BIOS image on a flash drive, connect it, and then just go into here. It will detect it and then, you know, upgrade your BIOS. We did that when we first got the board, super easy to do. Um, just takes a couple minutes. And then you have the auto driver installer. So if you're installing Windows, and on your first boot, uh, the auto driver installer will automatically download and install drivers for the system. I actually prefer this uh, because it's just a pain to download. Okay, I need the audio driver, or I, I need my SATA drivers, I need this, I need that. Auto driver installer just makes it super easy and it just downloads all the drivers that you need and then you don't have to worry about it. Um, it is enabled, I believe, by default. I think I had turned it off, um, but it is enabled by default. But again, if you want to turn it off, you can set it to disabled or enable it, whatever you want to do, however comfortable you feel with stuff being automatically 
downloaded. You do have the option, I believe, to select what gets downloaded. Like, I don't think everything just automatically gets downloaded in, and installed. It just says, hey, do you want to install this? Here's all the drivers you need, and then it will install. Um, then we go over to hardware monitor. This gives you a live view of your temperatures and your fan speeds and your voltages. So you can see kind of what's going on in your system and you can set all your fans up um, in different modes that you, you can do with the fans. It's all right here. Um, and again, if you don't want to download their, tu their A tuning software, you can do all of that stuff in here instead of that software. Um, if we go, if I go all the way back down to the bottom, we can see the fantastic tuning and everything like that. Um, so there's fan tuning in fantastic. Um, this allows you just brings up this little interface and this allows you to set all the different settings for your fans that you have connected. So again, you don't have to use their actual software. You can do it all here in the BIOS and then fan tuning. Um, if, if I would select this, it will go through and tune all your fans automatically. I'm not going to do that because we only have one fan connected. Um, and that's what's in the hardware monitor menu. If we go over to security, you can just set a supervisor password and a user password and secure boots. And then under boots, again, you can set up your boot options and things like that and everything to do with boots. And then under exit, uh, we have save changes, we have discard changes, load defaults, which I always like to see. And of course, I always talk about it in every BIOS video, we have our boot override, which allows you to boot from a flash drive first. And then, you know, you're gonna install Windows. And then when you restart your system, you don't have to worry about pulling that drive out. It will just automatically uh, go to your hard drive or whatever you have installed. It just makes booting or it makes installing Windows so much easier. You, you, can, you can walk away, do whatever you want, and then come back and you don't have to worry about the Windows installation process running over again. So just makes things much easier. But that is it for the BIOS. Honestly, I would really like to see an easy mode. It just, it just makes things easier. And I think for beginners, dropping into a big menu system like this can be extremely daunting. Um, and they're, you know, in, in easy modes, they have like one click overclocking or certain things that beginners might want to be able to mess with and you're not getting it in this BIOS, but the BIOS is snappy. It works. Um, everything is very easy to see. And again, you can do simple overclocking, like I said, by just go, oops, by going in here and setting that to customize and then setting your different settings. Um, that is basically it for this BIOS guys. If you have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video.